Hello and welcome to another episode of Script to Screen. I'm your host, Mark Bauer. This is a talk show where I interview local writers and filmmakers of the Iowa City area. Today my guest is Connor Aiden. Hi, Connor. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Good to have you here. So you're a student at the University of Iowa. What is your major? Uh, I am studying uh, film and cinema uh, with a minor in communication studies. When did you first become interested in film? Um, it probably came in at an early age. I remember um, growing up, my family would travel to uh, see relatives, and I was kind of like at that young age where I wasn't able to understand like the conversations. So they kind of put me in a room and just let me watch movies by myself. And the films they had were like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and The Wizard of Oz. So I just kind of grew fascinated with this kind of like imaginative like storytelling like something you wouldn't see in like ordinary life so I just became fascinated with film and that's how I kind of grew this love and appreciation over time. So getting a little bit older would you say maybe when you were in your teen years you started when would you say you started writing and, and making movies? Um, I think like well uh, during my like as I was growing up I kept deciding like, I couldn't make up what I wanted to do with my life um, and then when I found out about film, I started that when I was probably, probably like my last year of high school, probably when I was like uh, 17 or 18. And I just kind of like my professor, or the teacher at the time was like teaching me like how to use all these kind of like um, premiere editing software and how to edit um, yourself behind a green screen. And like we came, came up with these like little stories for ourselves for like little projects. And then I started like writing little stories for myself. And then kind of like as that was going, I kind of like thought like, oh, what if I did a movie about this? Or what if I did a movie about that? And I started planning like ideas um, of films. And I was like, OK, I, I, I want to get into filmmaking. This is what I want to do now. Did you complete any short films before coming to the university? No, I didn't have the opportunity to do any um, short films. Um, I just mostly did like little like snippets, like one minute shorts for class projects. And they were like the cheesiest things. like me levitating off the ground and floating back down, like just really cheesy kind of stuff. Really using that green screen. Really using the hell out of that green screen. Yeah. So when you came into the university, did you want to write? Did you want to direct? Which was, Where was your focus? I, was, I really wanted to direct my own um, films. I wanted to write and direct my films. Um, that was kind of like my thought process. I didn't want to be the actor because I'm kind of like, intimidated in front of a camera and I feel like if I did it I would just keep messing up my lines and just make an issue worse so I just thought like I really have a passion of storytelling so I'll be like this director or writer. Mentioning acting, have you had uh, acting experience uh, before you came to the university? Yes I did junior theater when I was a kid I did a couple of um, plays um, I, w I wasn't really a fan of them because they were kind of like not really, they were kind of like demeaning in some way. I mean, they were like, they were fine, but they were like something I wouldn't personally want to do. Like, I got made fun of it because there was this one play where the character, one of the characters was a fairy god dude. It was like a gender swap where the fairy godmother is now a dude. And these people are just kind of teasing me. And I didn't, I didn't appreciate it. And I was like, I'm not really going to act like, again like this again. I'm not going to do these kind of roles again. Sure. Uh, did, were you able to come back to acting later? Yeah, I decided to come back to acting a little bit later, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't the main focus of the story. I would be like maybe a side character or have uh, no lines in the film. Sure. And working with actors, it's maybe a little easier because you had some acting experience. They say yeah. if you take an acting class, it'll make you a better director. Has that been your experience? Yeah, I believe that's true. I mean, there's always, of course, room for improvement. Like, there's always something that you may not know that the actor can, like, tell you or teach you about. So it's, uh, it's always a nice process to um, have that acting on your belt because now you can, like, envision how the scene can go out. Like, okay, this character needs to be emotional. Describe, like, how what the scene entails and just kind of, like, explain it how you would do it. So. What is your approach to directing then? Is it having this conversation with the actor? Is it a lot of rehearsal? Um, there's like maybe a couple of 
talked with the actor about the certain scenes, and um, I, have, I did a recent film where I had to do a scene in the hospital bed, and I've never really had um, talked with my actress about that because it was kind of like a last minute adjustment. So I had to like step her aside, like, hey, listen, um, this is a scene that I wanted to do originally, but I, I couldn't do, but now I'm like putting it back. You're gonna be in a hospital bed, you'll be wearing a hospital gown, was that something you'll be comfortable with doing? She's of course agreed to do it. But there's always those like kind of moments where you're like, you need to make sure that your actor is just, a, just as comfortable as doing the scene as you are. Which genre would you say that you write typically? I don't know why I keep doing this. I keep going back to like these like horror elements. I don't know why I keep doing that. Like I, I try to do like serious like kind of films and it somehow like turns into like this kind of like thriller horror kind of films. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to stay with like a drama or like a comedy or something like that. So, but I've always somehow always always lean back to do just horror, which I, it works and people like it. But at the same time, like I need to like stray away from that and like branch out and do other things. What would you like to branch out and do? Like I said, I love to do like um, dramas. I feel like um, like kind of like period pieces as well. Kind of like um, like not, kind of like this '90s nostalgia because there's always like these '80s, '70s nostalgia movies coming out right now. So I was like, let's do something about the '90s. So I want to do like those like kind of like uh, drama pieces, like kind of like have like a little '90s nostalgia in it. Sure, everyone's talking about how great OJ is. <laughs> <laughs> That's mainly the main element. <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? So in addition to writing, directing, you have quite a bit of cinematography experience. When did you start getting interested in being right behind the camera operating it? I think that was just kind of like um, those moments where like I couldn't do, I couldn't have anyone else help me with my project, so I had to take the role of cinematographer, which at the time was just frustrating, but at the same time needed to be done. Is there a specific scene or a single shot in particular that stands out to you that you're like, wow, I'm glad I came up with that, or? Yeah, um, so a couple of years ago, I had was doing a short proje or a project where I was doing a story from Stephen King, a short story from Stephen King, and um, part of the story had the character in this motel, and I, I don't know why, but I just kept thinking about my grandfather's resort, because he, he owned one in uh, Kentucky. So I called him, was like, can we shoot at your resort? And he, he was like, go right ahead. And we came down there during Thanksgiving break, and there was this one shot, where um, he's sitting on top of a wooden uh, stairway leading to um, a, a building, an old building, and he's just looking across, and it's just a, pro a, a profile shot of his face looking out in, into the distance, and you see like the resort in the background behind him, and I think that's just my favorite shot out of everything I've shot up to this point. It's like, the way, like, oh, I love that shot. Oh, that's so good, it's so good. <laughs> Had you planned that out beforehand, or was that That was kind of like a spur of the moment, just kind of thing, because we were there. I was like, I'm, I'm trying, like, I need to get as much shots as I can. And I was like, I kind of like stepped back for a second, and I just kind of like looked at him. It's like, like, I grabbed the camera and did the quick shot. And so it was, it was, um, I'm really glad I did that. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that that idea came in that moment. You worked, uh, you were a camera person for a documentary that you had worked on. What was that experience like? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I learned a lot during that process. Um, we, me and other students from the University of Iowa were sent out to um, this uh, business, or the small kind of like organization in Dubuque, and they were just kind of like commemorating these like family farmers. And so we met like these, you know, 10 families, I think, who had been a part of like growing up on a farm or had kids that were growing up on a farm. And so they were just like giving us these stories about their like lives and it was just like a really emotional kind of like process of just like seeing these people like unable to um, go on vacation like you or me because they have a job that's 24 seven, they can't take their kids on vacations because the job is 24 seven. So it was just kind of like a realization like how underappreciated um, farmers are in Iowa and then just um, getting, being able to tell their stories was really heartwarming. 
Was that a sit-down uh, interview, talking heads, or were you doing some B-roll footage? Yeah, it was a, both, a combination of both. We were like, had, we had the family sit down, we we talked to them, and then um, either before or after the interviews, we would like wander around their uh, homes and just kind of like take shots of like the, of their land. And uh, uh, there was like one farmer in particular who had uh, cattle, and after we did the interview, we went into his uh, cattle field and we started shooting all the cows running around and he had like a baby calf with him too so he was just like kind of like stroking this like baby calf and it was just like a great moment in the piece that I, I really enjoyed. You also co-edited that documentary. What's that experience like? I, I imagine you have hours upon hours of footage. You've got to make a cohesive story. Yeah, that was <laughs> 10 stories. We got to like pick the best ones and put them together, which was hard because it's hard to like tell someone or show that like someone, you document someone and then you can't tell their story, which is like really frustrating. And I, I'm sure you know, the people we interview would have loved to be on it. But at the same time, like we have to create a cohesive narrative. We can't couldn't fit everyone in there, which was very difficult. So we just kind of pick certain points in the stories and, and people's stories that would fit well with the overall narrative. What's something about cinematography that uh, people don't necessarily think about? Something that's either hard or interesting, fun about it. Uh, I think one the thing that people kind of like underestimate is that um, just bec like handheld shots don't work all the time. Matt, <laughs> the, um, uh, I think it's nice just to have like steady like have a tripod or a steady cam just to make sure the shot is steady, works every time. Um, and if it's a scenario where the tripoders won't work then I encourage to use handheld, but like always consider using tripod first because it, it helps. It makes it helps your arms. Sure, yeah. You get buff though by the end you of the You get show. buff at the end, that's true, but at the same time, it's a workout. Are there any techniques that you'd like to try in cinematography or even directing that you haven't quite approached yet? Um, you know, I've always wanted to try like these, um, bird's eye view shots, um, either with a drone or with a helicopter, that's a little ambitious, but you never know when you get a helicopter. But I always like those like kind of like drone shots, you just see like everything from above. And I, I really like those kind of shots. And also like shots where like um, the cameras are attached to like a, a vehicle and you kind of like follow the car or person mm -hmm. as they're like either going from one place to another. And I kind of like those shots and I want to try those kind of like techniques. Sure. I think you see that a lot in like Breaking Bad. They they put the camera on one of the objects. Yeah. Uh, you were the cinematographer on Dead Air, which is a movie I wrote and produced. We have Matt Tribble here, the director of that film. So we brought you early on. I recruited from the SVP uh, organization here at Iowa. What did you think of the project when it was pitched? I love the project pitch. I really thought this was like a project that I wanted to be involved with. There was like not as much people um, coming back to Iowa pitching like, like, hey students, you want to make a movie with us? Like, we, we'll give you that experience. And so just having you guys like come in, like tell the story that's like so um, awesome and so, um, uh, like so involved with like the uh, community uh, on campus is really cool. So I really like the idea that you guys pitched us. I think that was one of the things that we talked about also is that um, when, when we were students obviously like any chance to get on set like or, or be involved with any projects like absolutely want to be involved so um, yeah we I guess we kind of knew in a sense that there were students out there that, that wanted to kind of make stuff and we're thankful that, that uh, you guys jumped on board so thanks yeah. You had mentioned that you had really liked the story what did you specifically respond to? I kind of like the story of this kind of character who is just, is like his ideas are being pushed out. Like everything he's coming up with, everything he wants to do is just being disregarded and pulled aside. Um, I thought that was a really cool aspect of the story. Just like this unheard voice and this irony that he's a like DJ, you know, he doesn't have a voice even though he's like the talk show host. So I, I like the idea of the movie. In terms of cinematography, we kind of knew 
there was this limited space in KRUI. I mean, it's it's is this working radio station, and the table that's there is there, the mics that are there are there. So, what was the experience working with Matt, uh, figuring out where to put the camera? I think it was just kind of like us, like kind of like standing in certain positions and just trying to figure out like, was this the spot we wanted to be in? Um, you know, there's you know a shot where I have to get behind like a desk, and there's like all these cords and wires that I have to like be very careful not to step on or pull <laughs> out because and ruin like the whole like station and get in trouble for that. Yeah. So it was just kind of like just working out like what we could do in a limited space. Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say um, a lot of it. Uh, for me is like let's have a general idea but then like once we have the actors and once we start kind of like re-blocking the scene and seeing as things kind of develop as we discuss it I'm just kind of trying to be somewhat loose with like the prepared shots and whatnot and thankfully you guys were, were you know played ball you guys were open to, to suggestions and, and changes um, you mentioned earlier the, the handheld stuff that was kind of one of those kind of on the fly sort of like we need to do more handheld just given the lack of sort of space and, and resources, and so yeah, I uh, um, I thought that uh, you guys did a very good job of sort of adapting uh, to to things as they were coming up on set, and then kind of rolling with the punches. Was there a specific scene that you enjoyed shooting? I think when we were in the uh, conference room, I think just having like the actor just kind of like ripped and improv off each other towards the end was like my favorite part. Like it was really hard for me to like keep a straight face and not laugh to ruin the thing. So I just thought like that was just a fun moment to be on set. What was something that maybe surprised you about working on Dead Air? Um, probably just the amount of time that it took just to um, set up because you know this was like an actual like radio station. So like every time we had we went in there we had to take everything out and like um, rooms and put them in the, somewhere else and we had to take the equipment out and then uh, work through the lines work um, the actors work through lines while me and Matt were trying to figure out like where to put the camera and then at, you know we spent hours and hours doing that and then um, at the end just putting everything back where we found it <laughs> you know just doing that repetitively was just something that I would I have never done really done in my films before I just always just shot on the cuff like where everything is just leave it I'm not gonna move it or deal with it but I'm, like I'm this kind of like more professional serious film I was just more like an uh, uh, eye opener like wow I need to be respectful of like that some people have a business that they run and they don't want people like ruining and tampering with their things so what was it like uh, collaborating with some of the actors? I know for some of the shots you had to frame them in certain ways. Did you have any conversations with them? Whenever I came up with a shot that I wanted to try, I would come to the actor and Matt and just kind of like pitch this idea that I wanted to do. I think one of the shots that I remember the pitch was that we were in the CD room and I wanted like a bird's eye mm -hmm. view of the camera looking down and seeing um, the actor run all these kind of like CDs just to show his love and passion of music. So it was kind of like one of the pitches I came up with. Yeah, that, that's one of those things where like, um, at least with me, I definitely like to try to give the actors a certain level of freedom. And likewise, cinematographer, other members of the crew, if you have an idea, it's it's you know it's better to try it, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and you just don't put it in the movie. But yeah, there, there are instances where like Connor would come up with some cool shot ideas, and then and you see them in the final products because because they work for that scene. Yeah, I really like that uh, CD room because he's really just engulfed in all these CDs, and it's yeah. I'm pretty sure pretty I called cool. it time like the Connor shot. Yeah, the yeah. Connor shot. Yeah, because yeah. like I, I, you even mentioned earlier, like you like this sort of like overhead looking down kind of seeing the space of everything, and so yeah, yeah I, I thought it fit very nicely. Yeah, nice. I agree that um, you were very open with us about like having our own kind of like creativity and uh, I remember when we were doing the diner scene you were kind of like uh, inside kind of like cleaning up and just like putting away equipment I was I still had the camera with me so I started going around the restaurant and started taking like all these kind of like random shots I got the kitchen I got like the fan I got the yep. um, you know outside of the restaurant so I got all these little shots which some of them did make into the final yep. job so it's nice to know that my kind of like uh, Spur of of spur of the moment just kind of like came out and uh, got into the film. Yeah, yeah filmmaking is a collaboration. So uh, anytime you can get get other people's input and get their sort of ideas, it it always makes the project better. I think. 
I know we used a wheelchair as part of uh, <laughs> one of our equipment pieces. You were, you had the time of your life. Oh man, I love that wheelchair. <laughs> it was really fun being back in a wheelchair. Um, <laughs> I just uh, went on set. We were just, I was just having a ball, just trying to get people to laugh because you know it takes a while. For, you know, people are spending hours on set, so it was just kind of like that moment, just like people need to laugh. And I, I'm that kind of kid who just wants to see people laugh. So just I got in that wheelchair and just started yelling at people like I remember back in my time we didn't have iPods yeah. we had CD players yeah. or something like that I don't remember the entire skit but it was really fun just being in a wheelchair and just like like push me to the next scene yeah. I, I, I would walk but I choose not to yeah. <laughs> I think you guys work for a living yeah. Matt, I think Matt was the only one who pushed me around the most I, I think I push you but but ultimately made up for it because when we were at KGN shooting, you were pushing me around the whole time. <laughs> and I think it was at the very end of shooting, I, re I recalled like, you know, when we would reset shots, I could just stand up and then like walk to the next point instead of making Connor push me there the whole time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, sorry about that, Connor. But <laughs> right. Is there anything you took away from Dead Air, either advice for us uh, going forward or some advice for yourself? Don't. Be afraid to ask people, you know, you, what you guys did really well was just like come back to the university and just ask students who really want to be involved in film if they want to be in this project. So it's just like, just getting people to believe in your project is the one thing I learned. And you guys did a phenomenal job just making me and the other crew members believe in this project of yours. Well, great, that's what we were going for. Yeah, right? I was just say like, um, yeah, with I think anything, just like don't don't be afraid to ask is I think a just great yeah, sort of. You design. do you know help you know build connections. That's yeah, how, exactly. You know, this kind of like industry works. You need to build connections and know people, and you know, uh, one day you know, um, I may need like help with the film, and I may call you guys because yeah. so, yeah. we have this like a history together on this project. So you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shorthand uh, becomes uh, easier to work with and, and all that uh -huh. fun stuff. So yeah. I know you're graduating in a couple weeks. What Congratulations. Would you Thank yes. You. I guess we'll have to see if you make it. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's getting real hard, man. <laughs> Do, are there any projects that you have lined up? Um, there's probably a few, a couple of projects that I've been envisioning to do for quite some time that I'm really passionate about. Of course, you know, it's all about like the development, the writing, and then getting the money for it, and then getting the sets, and then getting the actors, you know, it's just going to be all these things that I'm going to have to work through. But right now, I'm just kind of working on developing the story and kind of like writing the script and doing rewrites of the script and getting that script out there and hopefully eventually getting interest and eventually making it. You know, I actually just thought of a question. I asked Riley this uh, last time. Um, What's your favorite like phase of the filmmaking process? Pre-production, production, post. Each one obviously entails its own different sort of struggles and and, and uh, rewards, I guess. No, I, yeah, I agree. Each process is like or, like has rewards and like downsides to it. Um, I it, it depends on the project that I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. um, at the re most recent project that I did, I think I had more fun just writing the story than shooting it. Obviously, it was, it was a great time by shooting it, but sure. I just think uh, coming up with this concept and just going at it was the best part because I just I envisioned it for so long. I was like, I gotta make this project. And I wrote it and I sent it to people who were interested in helping me and got them to tag along with me and we made this project. And I think the post production was also fun to do just because now you have all this like clips and now you can tell your story of the way you saw it in your head. So I like the the pre-production and post-production. Not as much as the production, because that takes a lot of time. Sure, I sure. think, But the pre-production and post-production is probably my, my favorite. Very cool. You had mentioned uh, some of the projects you've worked on in this interview. Is there any place some people can find? Uh... Yeah, I have a uh, YouTube channel. Um, it's just with my name, Connor Aiden. And then I also have a Vimeo page, um, also just Connor Aiden. <laughs> so if you want to check out my videos, uh, go ahead to those two sites. and then. Um, I also help out with numerous other students at the University of Iowa. Either check out Student Video Productions or um, John Vermol, Maeve Schmidt on YouTube or Vimeo, and you'll be able to find something that I'm involved with with them. Sure. You'll see a credit somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> In tiny, tiny That's right. <laughs> Is there any advice you have for aspiring filmmakers and other students? I just say 
get a camera and start shooting. That's my advice that I really want people to actually do because it's one thing to write the story and like, oh, I have this great story, and then someone goes, want to make it? And just mm, make the story before you get that like, you know, cold feet because once you're like in the process of making it, it's just like so much enjoying, and I, I encourage people to like um, watch other films. There's have sort of like grown with like filmmaking and whatnot because like some like Eastern European countries it's like it started off as propaganda but it kind of like blossomed into some, something else that's kind of like unique and, and interesting and it's really kind of cool just to like see around the world and, and how different um, filmmakers from different places kind of tell us how they learn to tell a story and, and it kind of um, keeps things fresh and interesting and it's, yeah. always, it's always cool to, to check out. Yeah, I would encourage students to watch um, your car, uh, car wise um, Chunking Express. I think that's the one film mm. that if you want to be a filmmaker, you need to watch that film. What's it? What's it called? Um, Chunking Express. Chunking Express. It's a really, it's okay. a really cool story. It's, I have not seen it. I got to check it out. It. It's yeah, a really yeah. good story to watch. Okay. Well, excellent, uh, Connor. I want to thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me, man. It's good, uh, good seeing you guys. Again. Yeah. Oh, good seeing and you. Thanks again for helping out with the project. Super appreciated. Yeah, no fun. problem. So, no problem. Thanks for being on, no, Matt. No problem. <laughs> thank you for watching this episode of Script to Screen. We'll be seeing you next time. No gang signs. Oh, sorry. <laughs>